Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. This is Coogan Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm delighted to be joined by heavyweight contender. Let me take my glasses off for this one. Why? Because I want to see in your eyes. Hello. Hello, mate. Dillian White, you take on Anthony Joshua on August the 12th. <laughs> You're such a cunt. You're such a cunt. August the 12th. See, I say August. I don't say it. August 12th, yeah. yeah August 12th. I don't say it like what you say. I say no, it. I said it. August 12th. You say I say August. I say August 12th. I've, I've learned to read since then. <laughs> that clip's gone viral. First of all, how are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? What's going oh, on? All good. What What is that drink you've got down there? It's very colourful. I actually had a taste of that earlier. It's quite nice. So this is our new drink, sparkling lean protein drink. This This drink is mad. 15 grams of protein. One of the highest forms of protein you can get. This This drink, I'm telling you, this drink could make your PP go up. It'll give you stamina, it'll give you lead in your pencil. Really? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's a good drink, it's a good drink. It tastes exactly like soda as well. How are you anyway? I'm alive, man. I'm alive and kicking and I'm grateful. Thank God, life is not too bad. Okay. Should I take my hat off so you can see my face? Can we see your haircut? I just got a normal haircut. I wish I was as young as... Bro, are you... Hang on. No. Hold on. No, no, come no, back. No, no, come no, back. No, no, come no, back. No, no, now let's no, ask no, one no, question. No, no, no. Hey, hold hey, on. Hold on. Don't ever take your hat off in that interview with me again, bro. Why? Because you're here... Oh, <laughs> no. Can, I, can I say something? Look where his hairline starts and where he finish. Where does it Don't worry start? about that. Have you delivered him a fight for August 12th? August. I would have loved him on the undercard, but I don't know. I see you, Come down. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I would love him to be in... Are you ready to fight? Who am I fighting? I don't know. I'll fight anyone. Name them. I'm trying to think. You name them, I'll do it. We, want, we want the David Adderley fight, man. But, but I want Magic. I want David Adderley. I'll fight Magic for free. A white rhino. White rhino. No, seriously, though. When you, when, when, uh, what day we go for Fabio to fight? 12th. You fighting until for all? Maybe. All right, let's try and make it happen. Let's kind of... I'll say one thing. Oh. If you're ready for July 29th, you're definitely going to be ready for August 12th. I'm ready, oh, I'm yeah, ready to roll. Yeah. I am ready to roll. So he's, we're just talking out who. He's young and he's always in shape, man. He's got time on his hand. He's always in shape. Apart from his knees, though. Yeah, look. He's got the same knees that you do. <laughs> real road. <laughs> <laughs> the real road kill knees, boy. <laughs> some, real, some road kill badger, boy. <laughs> No, I'm taking your hat. I'm taking your hat. I'm getting pain in my kidneys. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Anyway. Oh. Anyway, how are you? I'm good, bro. It's good to see you. Apart from your guys on AFL, keep fucking with me, man. Why do they keep... Do you want to talk about this? No, are we going to talk about this? Because they keep using shit pictures of me. The one fight I came in out of shape, they use a picture all the time. Then they put my age wrong. Bro, I'm Luis Ortiz's brother, bro, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ortiz's dad, please, man. Stop that. Bro, you're a fucking cunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're a fucking cunt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, so you didn't know how old I was. I thought you were 47, but you look 47. I wish I could play people the, 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 the message you sent me earlier on today. Oh, shit. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Anyway, should we move on from here? You know, I get disappointed when my friends let me down, you know. I class you as a friend. All right, we added on a year. We didn't add on 10. Calm down. We'll put you as 34 next time. How about that? No. 35. I don't want to end up on the register. Okay, moving on from there. Uh, <laughs> press conference today. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you and Joshua seemed actually relatively kind of okay. Um, yeah. Th these guys are they set me to be angry and raging and going off and, but I'm just chilled, man. You know, Joshua is all he normally is, but I'm chilled. Uh, you know, I'm uh, I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm you know I'm just I don't need to sort of fight. If I fight selling itself, and I'm I'm calm. I'm chill, taking it easy. You know. I'm in two minds about who won an exchange of words with you and Eddie Hearn today, though, because you did come back with some, or come with something. Eddie Hearn did come back quite well with something. He, he just had Justice Balls in his mouth. That's all, that, for me, that was it. Why does Justice Balls taste like? That was the double hit. He knows what his balls taste like, so he had to taste them. That's it. You know, he didn't deny it. He was like, um, yeah, um... Um, in comparison, it is a very related to fish. <laughs> oh, sorry, bro. No, sorry. Okay, let's let's just go on. Okay, compared to any other negotiations, it's a fish, though, because he already got a pussy. <laughs> you just stop. <laughs> you just stop now. Okay, Can we stop? Uh, uh, right, cool, cool. Right, no. In terms of negotiations to get this fight done, mm -hmm. um, were you ultimately satisfied with the position you were left with in terms of financially, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? No, but we see the opportunity and we're risk takers. I've always taken risks in my career, so this is this is nothing new. It's just taking another risk, that's all. You know, obviously, sometimes you have to look beyond what's in front of you. You understand? And it's a, you know, obviously and they get, they try to give me every reason to get out of the fight, basically. Because one wanted it and one didn't want it. So they're trying to give me every reason. And what's one of the easiest ways to get a fight? Alpha low money. Because Eddie knows my value, he knows what I bring. He knows most of my fights have been with it, with matchroom, so he knows what I bring, he knows my value, so they offer me way under my value, but that's, that's neither here nor there, you know, like I say, life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. I like that. So give us a rough indication without giving us exact figures of a percentage of what you think you should have got. So say that's I should have got... No, I'm just curious. Opinion. Everyone has an opinion on it, but, you know, there's a lot of money in the, in, in the fight, but... You know, but if I tried to, to, to hold it and go for that, then greed would have not made the fight happen. You know, understand? But because they're greedy, and I said, you know what? Okay, I'll take the opportunity. Then the fight's happening, so I'm grateful. I know you're not really going to care about this, but there are people out there suggesting that with a possible fight with Deontay Wilder and Anthony Joshua to happen in, in December, for a you... Guaranteed <sighs> fight. Guaranteed. Win, lose, or draw fights. Guaranteed. Not possible. Okay, so with that fight possibly pending, for him to fight you is a very, very high risk. People have said that. But people say I'm not good, I'm this and that, so it's an easy fight for him. That's why he's got his, his future fight already pins for dinner. I'm an easy fight for him. Walk in the park. Just to clarify from what Eddie Hearn was saying there, um, any deal, if you beat Anthony Joshua, for you to fight Wilder, that comes on your own terms. That's got nothing to do with the current situation involving mm -hmm. Joshua Wilder and yourself, correct? Yeah, that's nothing to do with that. You know, Eddie has carved out his path and he's carved out his path for him and his man Joshua. So, you know, they didn't consider me in that, you know, which is strange because I'm also one of the top five heavyweight in the world and box work. So you'd think that they would have carved some sort of plan out with me. What if one of these guys get injured or something happened? What happens then? Should he, you know these guys top four? It should be like at least top eight to make a proper tournament. You know the the, the top ten guys in the world. Mm. You know because there's bound to be injuries in these fights because you got the best guys going. It. Someone's gonna get knocked out or get injured or whatever. So you should have reserved. What happened then? The tournaments come up and stretch out nine, ten months, one year. Come on, man. Since that first fight 400 days ago between you and Joshua, where Eddie sat on Joshua's side, every fight that you've had involving Matchroom and Eddie Hearn, you've been on like the Matchroom Eddie Hearn side. I'm not saying, no. What am I saying wrong? Oh, uh, uh, it's okay. You've been promoted in, all, in those fights, the majority of them, yeah. On see, that's correct. All right, the majority that's of them. That's correct. But this okay. time, you're actually sitting there for the first time since 400 days ago as Joshua and Hearn and then you, correct? Yeah, of course, but, but that's to be expected. You know, listen, as long as you go into the situation knowing what to expect and prepare yourself, then you can't be surprised, you can't be sandbagged, you understand? 
You know, I, I, I knew this was happen. You know, like I said to him, he went out to Texas as AJ, but he couldn't stop by to see me. In, you know, could have stopped by had a cup of tea and bug around. But it's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not angry about it or nothing. It's just like it is what it is. So when I beat AJ and run off to to BT, then what happens then? When I just say yeah and retreat to BT cave, then what happens then? He might just, he might just cut the wrist and just bleed out in the office, boy. How do you describe your relationship with Hound? We got a decent business relationship. When it's good, it's good. When it's bad, it's bad. It's like the bitter ex-girlfriend that still love you, that's always angry with you. If you let me and the vibe is there, but <laughs> if you meet and she's not feeling it, then she'll tell you to go for yourself, you know? That's our relationship. It's a weird analogy. Yeah, very weird. <laughs> Dillian, what, for you, obviously you're not even thinking, I heard you talking to the press there about, mm -hmm. you're not thinking about Wilder, this, that and no. the other. Your focus is August the 12th, Joshua, that's yeah. it. It's a hard fight, man. Listen, I would have said to my guys, listen, let me get this one out of the way first, and then we'll negotiate, you know what I mean? It's, just, it's a hard fight to, you know what I mean? Listen, I'm not even thinking about August 13. Just thinking about 12. I want to support your, 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 your gig and all that. But Are you coming? If I win, I'll come. That's not fair. Why? No, I want you to come. What? So basically, I'm going to talk to you if you win, or I'm not going to talk to you if you lose. Just give, that re give referee a brown envelope, man. Take. Shall I buy your ticket to it? No, no. Pay the referee off. <laughs> you better be there on August the 13th, you swear to God. Because you're going to be in London on that day. You better come. Oh, you didn't know that. I might leave the same night. No, I've seen your itinerary. You're here. You're not leaving till the Monday. I know you are. Oh, who told you that? You're laying over there. Hmm, interesting. I don't think you'd... I don't think you'd even... Tell you where there's a drink of water, that man over there. <laughs> if you're dying, they'd be like, oh, me, there's water over there. <laughs> you're going to come and support me, though, obviously. Of course, I'll come and support you. I'll come and support you, of course. Oh, I've got the first aid for getting tickets now. You need to support me, so, yeah. Right. I'm going to get your second fight, anyway. Where was he at the first one? I didn't know you then. That's why. Mm. I didn't know you. I met you on your second fight. Yeah, so you should have come to the first one. You'd have, known, you'd have got to know me then. What do you think about Tyson Fury fighting Francis Agana? I, I don't even know what to say, man. Crossover fights is good, but it shouldn't be an exhibition fight, though. It should be a proper fight. Either boxing rules with MMA gloves on, or that, that's what it should have been. Boxing rules with MMA gloves on. Then they, that's meat in the middle. You understand? Or punches and kicks with no takedown in the boxing ring. I don't know. Well, an exhibition is a bit of a joke, having an ex exhibition. It's like, they're both too big to be exhibited. It's actually, it should be a proper fight, man. Should be a proper fight. How much rounds is it as well? I don't think anything's been confirmed exactly the stipulations like around it. He's going to just, just beat Boss Bungano. Bungano can't strike. Even if oh? he's not. Did you say Bungano? Bungo, whatever his name is, I don't know. Ngano. Ngano. How do you, how do you, how do you pronounce the mad African name, Jimmy? <laughs> Francis Ngano. <laughs> hey, is that Jimmy's name, boy? The real man you are, you know? <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce it. Listen, even said them here, yeah, I pronounce... I can't say the African's name, man. I'm sorry, man. I'm not racist, but it's mad. Francis Ngano. Francis Umbungu. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Engano. 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 That's it. That's it. I said it right. <laughs> it's like, it's mud. Saga. No, all right, if he's not fighting Alexander Usyk, though, to go and get possibly there's, there's 30, there's 40, is he going to earn that kind of money, though? He could have made money fighting Andrew Ruse. You know, this other guy, you can make money fighting Erica Vidja, one of those guys. There's guys you can fight, man. You know, there's guys you can fight. There's loads of guys you can fight. Billy, shut up. Billy, too loud. Just a couple more before I let you go. What do you give, or what chances do you give Danny Dubois against Alexander Usyk? He have a massive Danny Dubois. He's got punch power. He's heavy-handed and um, he's aggressive. But, you know, Usyk is a good fighter, but... 
you have to always give a puncher a chance, man. You know, and um, if he catches him, you never know. You know, but Usyk seems to be, he does well when he get hit with big shots. So he, he he he's very good. His composure is very good, man. So I don't know, but I give him a chance. He, he's a, he's a puncher and he's young as well. He's got like Usyk's what thirty six, almost thirty seven. You know. Don't get his age wrong, Carl. Uh, I said, uh, I don't know. I didn't say words. I said, maybe. Okay. Um, listen. Why have you got all this white stuff on your shirt? Like someone jizzed on your shirt. <laughs> Look at that. Like Billy Batson jizzed on your Tiny shirt. Tiny bit of toothpaste. It's okay. <laughs> that's, that's loads of white drops. That doesn't seem like a tiny bit of toothpaste, bro. Yeah, you look at my hair. What are you going to say about my hair? Go on. Yeah, go on. What are you going to say about my hair? Go on. Oh, uh, yeah. That's racist, bro. That's oh. No, that's, that's racist. It's got white fluff on it. No, that's racist. You're Why is that to, racist? My head, my head looks like a microphone. Why is that racist, though? I don't get that. That's racist, bro. Why? Why? Imagine I start screwing light bulbs in this bitch. Then what would you say if I start going, hit a good nigga, I start doing the mad dance. <laughs> See, I don't what you've been doing for 13 years. <laughs> 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 what you've been doing for 13 years anyway. Oh, man, the screen, the real HD light bulbs. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you're going home, as in back, not home, as to America to, to finish off the rest of your camp? Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks I started training and then coming back. It's long though. Flying and flying again and flying again. Put, getting some air mileage. I might get a cheap flight to my destination after. Okay. What's your uncle like to visit? Very good. I might visit. You got any connections there? I've got a lot of connections there, yeah. They've got a statue of me pending in 2024. When, was the, when did you leave Sri Lanka? I bet you haven't even been back. I've been to Sri Lanka, yeah. When? i never seen a picture of you in Sri Lanka. Right. What does that mean? It means nothing, does it? Yeah, but when people go back to their country, they take pictures. You, you haven't, you're moving mud. Okay. I'll show you on my phone. Wait there. All right. Do you want to see a picture? Quickly? No. I don't, I'm not looking at pictures on your <coughs> No, phone. I'm being serious. I'll show you a picture of me in Sri Lanka. Yeah, one second. Tim, oh, hold on. Talk to me. Hold on. You should have said it. Don't talk to me. Don't there you go. Me. You want to see? That's me in Sri Lanka. All right. There we go. I don't know how to respond to that picture, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> I, I'm, I don't know. That was me in Sri Lanka. That's the last time I went there. Oh, uh, 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 <laughs> way, way down, and uh, I don't know what's going on. I'm confused. In Sri Lanka, you asked for the picture I showed you. But I don't know. Was was that a goat or a, <laughs> or, or a donkey? I, I, <laughs> Oi, hey, have donkey. some respect. Violence on that donkey. Relax, man. Please, man. Dillian White, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. Um, we'll definitely catch up with you, hopefully, the week of the fight. Definitely. Make sure you come to August 13th. I'll be disappointed if you don't I'll rock up there. to the O2. Relax, bro. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Can you just say, get your tickets now? Just like, tell people, wouldn't it? Get your tickets, isn't it? Get your tickets, support my man. It's going to be funny. It's going to be funny. And I'll be there as well. You come on stage if I invite you on. If I get to the light bulb dance. It's me and Eddie. Eddie. If I do the light bulb dance on stage, 100%. If you let me, if you allow me to do it. 100%. I'll come on stage. I'll come and sit down. Okay. Imagine rubbing egg in Eddie's face. Would you do that? Yeah. Dillian Wright, thank you very much. Best of luck on August the 12th, mate. Cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. For the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Kukin Cassius, and some very special guests. Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn... You get up, you dress up and you fucking show up.